Thank you for watching this solid tech video on how to add cameras and paths. I'm loading up a miter saw that already has a camera and path added to it as part of an animation. If I now play this animation, we can see that the camera is rotating around the miter saw, zooming in and zooming out. It gives us a real nice display of this particular product much better than just having a simple wizard of the miter saw rotating around the y-axis with a camera in a fixed position. The cameras are really easy to add and the paths don't take any time at all but it gives you a, a much more improved animation. So how do we do this? If we look at what's already been applied to this particular model we can see that there's a 3D spline sketch and a 2D sketch. So the 3D spline is where the camera goes along and its focus point is the 2D sketch. So I'm going to create a 3D sketch, so sketch, 3D sketch, and now I'm going to look from a plan view and I'm going to create my spline from above. This means I only have to worry about where the Z and X points are because Y is going to be on the datum of zero. So I can simply trace around where I'd like this to go and then finish off. So if I now rotate this model around, what I now need to control is the Y. So if I look at these points, we can see it's got a Z and an X value and the Y is at zero. So the easiest way to do this 3D spline is to then to just enter the appropriate value along the Y. So I get my height. I'm now just going to go around and adjust all these. Now I have my 3D spline um, and we can see the camera path. What I would highly recommend is just renaming that 3D sketch so anyone else who opens up that file understands why you've got a 3D spline sketch sitting there and they won't just delete it. What I also want to add now is just a 2D sketch and this is what I'm going to use the camera to focus on. So I'm just going to pick the right plane and draw just a simple line. I'm doing this so the camera isn't just focused on a single point of contact. Again, rename this, so I'm just going to put POI, so point of interest, camera. Again, so there's no confusion later on if anyone opens this model up. So the next thing I need to do is add a camera. I'm currently using 2011 here, and we can see a camera is now on the fourth tab with appearances. So I'll just right click add camera. So I split the view into two. The view on the right is where my what it actually looks like from my camera and the view on the left is just rotating around the model. So with the target point highlighted you want to actually select the whole line not a particular point and then I can select a percentage of what I want to be along that line. So zero percent. Now I'm selecting this line for my other selection of camera position and again move that slider to zero. It's important that you do not select a point on that line otherwise it will focus but purely on the lighting segment itself and a percentage along there. And now accept. Right, so I've put the camera in the correct position. Now I want to create a new motion study. So I'll create a new animation. What you must do is, if I just, uh, what you then must do is right click on this orientation and unlock it so we can add new camera views and new keys. So I'll then right click on camera 1 which is the new camera created and say that that's the camera view I'm looking from. So at 0 seconds of this animation I'm looking from that camera. I then move my timeline to 10 seconds. I hold down control, grab this key and drag it across that 10 seconds so it's made a copy. I then can double click on that key. It brings up the properties of that camera and now at 10 seconds when I'm in that camera view I'm going to slide that camera position slider so it's 100% along that spline and accept. We can now see SolidWorks has put that green line. I now want to add a bit of a point of interest on the middle of that animation 
So if I'm just going to move this time lane to 5 seconds, I'm then just going to right click and go place key. So it's going to place a new key. Again, double click on that key. And this time at the target selection, I'm going to say that it's the camera at that particular point is going to move to 100%. So the point of interest of the camera changes. What I now like to do is just increase the zoom in. So you can see I'm at a fixed zoom point. You can use the slider to kind of slowly zoom in to get an accurate level. But it's a lot more dramatic and increased if you use the slider above. So I'll just pull that right down. I'll say about 20 degrees. Then accept. And now we can see the camera follows around that path and zooms in and zooms out to that focus point. I'll then disable the view creation and then hit the calculate so SOLIDWORKS works out that complete animation. So as you can see, it doesn't take very long but gives you a very impressive result of creating an animation. What I'd now like to do with the animation is save it. So I'll go to the floppy disk icon. We'll see that it's, uh, I then can save to a particular location. It's then saving the camera angle. And if we have a look under here, it's only giving me the option of SOLIDWORKS screen. So if I cancel that, the reason is because I'm currently using a premium, so in professional premium you have the photo view 360 rendering option, so to give you photorealistic renderings and animations. So with that turned on, and I now go to save animation, I can then save it as a photo view, so it's actually going to photorealistic render each frame. You can also use the schedule button, because it might not be convenient for my computer to be tied up rendering an animation. So you can go through all the selection process, hit OK, and we can see here it then gives you an option to kind of schedule that rendering uh, for this animation. So I could start, hit a start time, and as long as I leave my computer on, SOLIDWORKS will create a journal file in the location and open up SOLIDWORKS, open up that file and start this rendering. Perhaps it's more convenient if it's done overnight. Otherwise you can just hit save as a SOLIDWORKS screen and it'll just save with the real view which is still a powerful and very photorealistic image. SOLIDWORKS is now rendering each frame and that's my animation done. I'll be doing another topic on this to show you how you can uh, do some more animation features with moving components but for part one I hope you find this very useful of how to set up cameras and camera paths for an animation. I uh, hope you can join us next time. Thank you very much.